Okay, here's all the materials you need for the lab. We've got our paper clips, two paper clips. I have some that are pre-bent here in case I break one. Um, we've got a beaker of salty water. We've got a beaker that has a test tube in it that's filled with water. Um, we have masking tape and we have our battery. And so the first thing you want to have the kids do is bend their paper clips first into this shape, then into this shape, and then into this shape. So I'll show you how you do that. You simply take the paper clip, you open it up, and this is where it breaks sometimes. You take the bigger piece and straighten it out. You take the smaller piece and you make a little hook. Okay, that's going to be one of your electrodes that you're going to attach to the battery. You do the exact same thing with the other paper clip. You open it up. You take the longer piece and straighten it out. You take the smaller piece and make a little hook. Okay, so now I've got my two wires that I'm going to put on either side of my battery. To put them on the battery, this is the part that can be tricky for kids, but if they're working in pairs, they can work together to do this. I simply want one paper clip here, the long piece, this long straight part is going to go on one side of the battery and the long straight part of the other paper clip is going on the other side of the battery. And this is where it gets a little hard to uh, tape it together. You take your masking tape and try not to let it get too tangled up and you put your masking tape across one end and then you put your masking tape across the other end. I try to keep the paper clip in there while you're doing it. And this is where teamwork comes in. And you tape it down. And this isn't holding those wires on there super tight, but it's holding them in place so that when it's time to put this in the uh, salt water, I can just squeeze a little bit and make sure that the connection's there. Okay? So that's all you have to do to get your battery ready. You want to make sure these two wires don't touch because if they touch you're short circuiting the battery. The wires get hot. It's not really going to hurt you um, but it is going to get hot and it's going to drain the battery. Um, you want to tell the kids right now that it's not going to shock them. It's only a 1.5 volt battery. It's not very powerful um, and so it's not going to hurt them other than the wires possibly getting hot. Okay now all you do is you take this is your um, gas generator you could call it and you're going to lower it into the salty water. And so my two hooks are totally submerged. And this part, I'm not sure if I can get a shot of it for you, but one of these is already bubbling. The one closest, if you can see it through the glass there, the one closest to the camera is already bubbling a lot, while the one that's furthest from the camera And that's why you don't really have to give the kids, you don't have to say, hey, is it bubbling? All they have to do is watch for a few seconds or they're going to see it bubbling. The one that's bubbling a lot with tiny bubbles is the hydrogen. The one that isn't bubbling yet, but it will eventually bubble, is going to be the oxygen. Now the hard part to explain, but it's easier to demonstrate, is getting the um, test tube on there to collect the hydrogen. So all you need is a test tube that's filled with water. It doesn't have to be sitting in anything special. It just has to be filled with water. You put your thumb over the top of the test tube, and then you have to get your thumb into the water with the test tube without letting any air get in there. Okay? I'll do that one more time. So I've got my test tube, and it's full of water. I cover it with my thumb, and then I invert the whole thing, and then I have to put my whole hand under the water so that I can get the, now the top of the test tube, which is at the bottom, under the water. And now I simply want to, I've got my two wires touching so it's getting hot. Um, now I simply want to navigate that while it's still under water over that hook that's producing all the hydrogen. So now I've got, and if you can see it from the side, I simply put my test tube right on top of there. There's nothing but water in this test tube right now. And it's over the hook that's giving off all those bubbles. And so those bubbles, a lot of them are going to this test tube. Now those are teeny tiny bubbles and you're not going to collect a whole lot of hydrogen real quick. 
but now is when you ask the kids the questions. Now is when you ask them, hey, looking at this model of how water splits into hydrogen and oxygen, notice that there's two smaller hydrogen molecules that are formed and one larger oxygen molecule that's formed. How does that relate to these bubbles coming off of here? And that's exactly what it looks like. There's smaller hydrogen bubbles coming off and there's a few, you can barely see them, there's a few larger oxygen bubbles coming off the other wire. Um, and so it kind of makes sense that if I'm making a whole bunch of hydrogens, they're coming off there right away. The oxygen are coming off the other end, plus some of the oxygen is actually oxidizing, it's rusting part of my wire. Um, so some of it's being used up in other ways. Anyway, that's the whole lab. One, once you're done, you simply navigate so that your gas generator is out from under the test tube. You take it out, you set it down, you make sure those wires aren't touching, because if they touch, they just get hot. You're just using up the battery. And then the kids can just leave their test tube in the water and it's holding that hydrogen gas. So this is a way we can store that hydrogen is simply by leaving it um, in a tank. It's going to go to the top and the water is going to stay at the bottom. Now, if the teacher has time, what they're going to do, and I can't do it with this little tiny test tube, you need something a little bigger. Um, what you can do is hold a flame to this. And so if you have enough hydrogen in there, you simply lift the test tube up, let all the water drain out, turn it sideways, and hold a flame by it. And if there's enough hydrogen in there, in there, you'll get a little poof. Sometimes it takes a bunch of tries to get enough hydrogen in there to get that little poof, but that's part of the fun. You do the experiment over and over again until you get it to work. So I know you're probably not going to use all of this, um, but at least you know it's, it's really not that hard. The kids can do it. I've done it with all the way down to really second and third graders. Um, they have more trouble with getting the tape on the battery than anything else. But once it's set up, they can do it. Um, older kids have no problem doing it at all. And older kids actually usually find a way to rig this up so they don't have to hold the battery anymore. Um, younger kids, though, enjoy holding the battery the entire time that it's creating oxygen. Anyway, nice talking to you. It's Peggy. Talk to you later.